Let's do a comparison with M2 Max chip. There are two variations, a 30 and 38 GPU. Let's find out if it's worth the money to upgrade to a 38 GPU version and get the top performing chip, especially if you're a photographer. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. If you've been following the channel, thank you. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. I'll be sharing with you a lot of information and I highly encourage that you pause the slide so you can analyze the result yourself in addition to the analysis I'll be sharing with you. As far as testing methodology and philosophy goes, if you're new, I highly encourage that you watch through the beginning portion of this because it will give you a pretty good idea how I test these machines and why I do them. Additionally, I also have timestamp in the description below too so you can jump to the various test portions. What we're gonna do is take a look at the top M2 Max versus the base M2 Max. And the variation of these comes down to eight GPU upgrade. So we're gonna see if this eight GPU is worth $200 or not, or if you're better off putting your money elsewhere on another component upgrade on your system. As usual, if you're finding the content that I'm sharing helpful to you, please consider contributing to the tip jar or using a super thanks on YouTube. This is one way it's going to help me support the channel and also purchase future hardware to test on this channel as well. So as I mentioned before, we're looking at about a $200 difference that will increase the GPU from 30 to 38 GPU. Now, one thing to note about this is that you're looking at the same amount of CPU in the system and both of them will have 12 core CPU on the system. So they are the exact same CPU. Now the test system that I choose is going to be a bit of a mix and some of you will probably not agree with the result, but I mean, that's okay, but this is the one we're going to use. And the argument here is going to come in the fact that the 14 inch one may run at a slower clock speed because it, you know, there's less thermal heat dissipation in the chassis and everything. I can see that. However, the results that we're going to see are going to just really paint a clear picture of the performance gain you're going to be able to get between bumping up the CPU or not on the system. And I'll also analyze and annotate this when we get to those slides as well. But these are the machine we're looking at. Both of these are the stock configuration. So one of them is the 14 inch MacBook Pro stock. The other one is the 16 inch stock. And both of these have 32 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte SSD. Additionally, what I will also do is put in the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the M1 Max this has been the top configuration. The one on this has been upgraded. So it's no longer running on stock memory or SSD. Both of these components has been upgraded. And I also will put in the result from the Mac Studio as well, which is a stock configuration. And on this, something I said every time is that if you're a pro, if you're using this in a pro capacity, definitely consider getting the pro ship because it will enable more things you can do in the system. For example, linking to more displays. Pro ship also has more high performance core compared to the regular consumer leaning chip. So just think about the type of workflow you're gonna be doing and pick the ship that's really appropriate for what you want to do so that you can get the most performance out of these machines. As usual, I'll be taking a pro photographer's approach to this and mostly what I do in my workflow is really going there waiting for, for example, Lightroom Classic to preview and exporting the file. The faster I can do those tasks, the faster I can move on to the next project. And this is the reason why we're doing the test this way. In addition to this, I'll also be doing a single application test because I have also received comment that these tests are not multitasking and that nulls and void tests. No, it doesn't. It really shows you how the silicon is performing. So that's how I'm going to test this because I really want to know if the silicon is performing better from one version to the next or not. And how does it compare to the previous generation? That's what I want to know. Here's the thing. If you multitask, you should definitely consider upgrading your system by getting more RAMs and so forth so that your system can run faster. And that's pretty much the principle at the end of the day. So let's first talk about SSD. I said this before that with SSD, you can always expand the storage using an external device, hard drive, SSD um, that are external. You can always use a NAS to expand the storage. And that's something you can't do with the memory. So that's something to consider. And I always say that when you configure the SSD on this system, literally configure it to what you need, to what you're gonna to need today, what you're going to need in the future, and don't worry so much about the speed. Now, all the machines I'm testing here are the one and two terabyte capacity, so you're gonna get the top speed or almost top speed on these anyway. That is not going to matter in this particular test. However, on other tests where it may show some variation, out of all the extensive testing that I've done, it only shows up on one, and that is the Photoshop 56 gigabyte test, to which some have also commented who is really working with that type of large files. And I know there are some, so let's keep an open mind towards this whole thing. But SSD speed 
for majority of the people, it's not really going to matter. And I'll have a separate video on that out soon too, with some of my thoughts about that and some of um, the supporting arguments for and against that. Anyway, if you really want to know how much the program when you're really doing image editing is really using SSD, I'll leave a link to this video in the description. It's the one that I made talking about SSD that you don't really need to get the fastest one to really gain the max performance because it's not going to make any difference whatsoever in the way how the program is really working. Now let's talk about RAM. It is the component that you can't expand once you configure the system. Whatever you configure it, that's pretty much it. Unlike an SSD where you can plug in an external one, there's no way to plug in an external RAM. And this is where we have to really consider our use case. Are we using two machine, laptop, desktop, where our laptop can be configured with less RAM? Or are we just using one machine where this has to be the one that's going to be the top performer on the road for us? Think about this. Think about the way how you use your computer on a daily basis to really observe that. I know I am part of the crazy group that will have multiple browsers and way too many tab opens and also multiple program running in the background. For me, I can always configure my system with more RAM because I know I'm going to use it. And if you're like that too, and you want to get the best experience possible, well, you may want to consider doing that as well. A few things about RAM I also want to annotate is that you really want to observe the way how you use the machine. I would say if you're a creative, restart the computer, launch activity monitor. And what you want to do is go into the memory tab and just take a look at the memory pressure along with the physical memory, how much you're really using on your system. This will give you a good idea as far as if the current RAM in your system is enough or if you need to upgrade to more. So those are things to think about. If your memory pressure is green, you're good. If it's yellow or red, you may want to consider adding more. Personally, for me, I tend to use a program called iStat Menu 6 because it keeps track of the memory pressure and everything else up to 30 days. So this is giving me a good metrics into the performance of my machine and how I am using the computer. Another thing I also want to mention about RAM as well is that you want to configure the amount that you need. And the reason why is because these RAM runs at a magnitude. And I mean, talking about nine to 10 times faster than the speed of the SSD inside your machine. So if you're really worried about SSD speed, configure the RAM to the amount that you need at 400 gigabytes per second to interlink speed between CPU and GPU. You're never going to get that with an SSD, especially in these machines right now. Anyway, in the future, maybe, but as of now, this is what we're looking at. And here's the thing for pros. I say, if you can go out and configure with 32 gigabytes at the very minimum, because this is a good sweet spot for pro. If you're not sure if you need it or not, 32 is good because it's going to give you more room for the apps to run, the app to expand to the memory and everything. So that's one of the consideration point. Now, I also made a video about comparing 16 and 32 gigabytes computer as well, just running one single app, but doing a lot of the brushes and everything, for example, in Lightroom Classic. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below as well. It is from a previous generation with the M1 Max MacBook Pro, but that will give us a pretty good idea as far as how the machine is performing when you don't give it enough RAM. And this is a chart for the specs. This is how you're going to read the specs as I'm about to share them with you. So let's take a look at Lightroom Classic <clears throat> between these two M1 Max ship. Now everything has been retested and this is on Ventura 13.2 Lightroom Classic running version 12.1 and all of these machines support full hardware acceleration that's set to automatic. With this, let's take a look at the one to one preview. This is a number that we're looking at when you really go in and compare these two machines. It is about a 7% improvement. And what this really attributes to is probably just the frequency speed between these ship and the thermal dissipation. So obviously the 16 inch one is running faster, but this doesn't necessarily null and void the result. It just shows us that yes, there is a slight increase in time when you're really using the 14 inch one. But if you want a smaller, lighter machine, I mean, for example, for this cycle, I decided to choose my personal machine to be the 14 inch one because I want the lighter weight and that's the machine that I choose. So, I mean, consider the dexterity in a use case as well. Don't always go for the speed and the spec because here's the thing. Once you really use the machine and there's no reference or comparison point, you're not really going to notice if you're really just spending about a minute longer to do an export or to do a preview. So that's just another thing to consider. And with this in mind, let's throw in a couple of our reference machine. Now, interestingly enough, the M1 Max is really trailing behind. It's almost double the time. It's not really quite double yet, but it's really trailing behind on this one. And interestingly enough, these two Max ship, the M2 generation, is really pushing the M1 Ultra for the money right there. So I find this data that rather interesting that we're seeing this big of a performance gain and improvement, but this 
Also, I will tell you maybe a little bit short lived because this is the only task that in my testing where we see a big jump in number like this. Everything else you're about to see are not going to be quite as big. Let's take a look at 1000 file export. So this in itself is about a 6% improvement. Now, the export in Lightroom Classic doesn't just use the CPU, it also uses the GPU to run this task. And this 6% accounts for an increase from 30 to 38 cores. So eight more cores gain you around 6%, which is even less than a minute. Now, for the money, I would probably configure the machine at 30 GPU and get the base M2 Max. And by the way, when I say top M2 Max, base M2 Max, I'm talking about the ship itself, not the computer configuration. So there's some confusion about that. I want to clarify that too. And let's take a look at the other reference machine for comparison. Now this test shows us something rather different that the M1 Max is still holding its own just fine. And it, in fact, it is a little bit faster than the M2 Max 30 GPU version because this still has 32 GPU. So something interesting is really happening here that the M2 Max for this task is really holding its own just fine. And this is the reason why I also advocate at the same time that if you're really considering an upgrade or if you're really considering getting this generation, the M1 Max, I mean, they're really coming down in price and you can really get them for a really great deal. And that's something to consider. Now, when it comes to the Ultra, this is around two thirds faster. There's really no comparison as of now. So that still reigns as the Supreme ship when we're looking at these things. Let's take a look at HDR Merge. And with this, merging nine Nikon DA10 file to an HDR, the timing is about the same. And I would say the two seconds variation is just margin of error. It is a little bit faster on a new one by two seconds, but it could literally be me just pressing the start stop button a little bit too slow on the phone as well as I'm timing all these things out. Now let's take a look at the panorama merge, 314 megapixel from 14 Nikon DA10 file. This is starting to paint a picture for us, depending on what we do. If you do a lot of panorama merge, well, it actually may be a good idea to upgrade to 64 gigabytes of memory because you're going to increase the time. However, between these two machines running on this task, you're looking at around like a two seconds variation. This again is a margin of error. So this is telling us that they're running at about the same speed. So these are just things to consider. Now pay attention to tasks that you're doing and what you do a lot of because this is definitely going to help you configure the machine that you're, it's going to be best suited to your needs. Taking a look at Lightroom, this is a cloud version, Ventura 13.2, Lightroom version 6.1, and it also supports full hardware acceleration. Because there's no import preview in Lightroom, we're just gonna look at export right away. Now, Lightroom export works different than Lightroom Classic. This one uses CPU, GPU, and RAM all in combination together. And with this, we're gaining around an 18%, close to that 20% market improvement. So if this is a program you use, then it may be worth it to go to, for example, the eight more GPU version, the top M2 Max. But if you don't really use this and using Lightroom Classic, like I said, there is a lot to be said about even just, for example, the M1 Max or just the base M2 Max. So those are just things to think about. Here it is when we compare results to the other machine, you can see that the M1 Max is holding its own just fine. And in fact, because this also uses GPU and this has two more cores, it's actually performing just slightly better than the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Max ship. Chances are, if we have, for example, if we change this into a 16 inch one, it will probably be equivalent or maybe a slight faster one, but this gives us a good idea as to performance across the board and how they ranges. And personally, with this being a slight slower machine, I'm actually okay with that because we're only talking seconds for one thousand large files. This is not really a big deal. And as usual, Ultra just really blows all these machines two thirds faster out of the water. Now let's take a look at Capture One because I know a lot of photographers use Capture One. Ventura 13.2, this is Capture One 23 version 16.0.2. And with this, the time is pretty much within around a five seconds variation. In fact, it's a little bit faster on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is just using a CPU there are the exact same amount of CPU in the system. So if you're running Capture One, I've always said this, even from the M1 generation, don't upgrade to this top GPU option because you're not gonna gain that much. You're gonna see this happening too. So let's compare it with the other machine. This is 0.35% variation. 
not that much at all. And when we take a look at the time, again, the M1 Max is holding us on just fine, and the M1 Ultra is not really doing that good at all. It's only about less than two minutes faster than the M2 Max, but this is talking about a program that doesn't really go in and fully utilize the system resources because it's really designed more as a tether program, which I do understand, and I still want that toggle to be between tether and just bulk editing. I mean, that would just be great. Let's take a look at export. With this result, we are looking at a 2% variation. So upgrading and spending the extra $200 to get you to that extra eight GPU, it's giving you a 2% gain. This is the reason why I said that when you're really using Capture One, don't upgrade the GPU to the top one because it doesn't make a lot of sense. And if you take a look at this right now, it's less than a minute. It's really more like 30 seconds faster. So I wouldn't really spend this money at all if I'm using this for my workflow. Here it is with all the inner machines. Again, I will also say this, that the M1 Max is holding just fine. And interestingly enough, these are running about the same or faster than the Ultra, having way less GPU and also CPU core in the system and less system resource. But I mean, these are just a few seconds apart, so I'm not really as concerned about it. And for my workflow, I use Capture One every now and then. It's not something that I use on a daily basis, but if you are, this is something to consider. And now let's have a look at Photoshop. So for this, I am using Digital Lloyd, Lloyd Chamber Test. I'll leave a link to his website in the description below. These are the three tests that I'm using from his Photoshop benchmark, speed, medium, and huge. And I have, yes, received comments every time that who does 56 gigabyte files. There are some that does that and I'm doing it for those individuals, but I also wanna to see too what type of performance variation we're gonna get when we start to either exceed the RAM or really start to fill up the RAM on a higher configurated system. And for this, let's take a look at Photoshop speed. We are seeing the graph not coming together really nicely, meaning that there are some time variation, but you have to really think about this. This variation is milliseconds, meaning that we're really not gonna see a difference whatsoever. So the speed, when it comes to Photoshop for these machine, not that big of a deal. Now, what happens when we deal with a file that's 15.7 gigabyte? This is close to filling a machine that has a 16 gigabyte memory, for instance, but for these machine, because we have 32 and 64, it's not really a big concern. We're looking at this right now. And the numbers, I mean, the newer machines are a little bit faster, but again, they're milliseconds apart. They're not even half a millisecond. So chances are you're not even going to see or realize the difference in the way how these are performing. So we're gonna be good there with this. If you're working with file size that exceeds the amount of RAM that you have in your system, configure your computer with more RAM, especially if this is something that you're doing on a daily basis, day in, day out. But if you're not, and this is something that you go through every now and then, I mean, it's really only 30 seconds longer and it's really not a big deal. So these are 32 gigabytes machine, but when you upgrade to 64 and you're running this type of large files, you do see a speed improvement. And this is something, by the way, that I can tell you right now, having a fast SSD, even like in these one terabyte, won't even do too much of a difference. We're putting more RAM in the system. It's going to give you more of that direct benefit. This also including doing panorama merging in Lightroom as well. You're gonna get more benefit from having more RAM in your system than upgrading the SSD to get a higher speed. And I can tell you that much. So in all the testing for SSD speed, we're not even seeing the variation in this particular test, for instance. So that's just really something to think about. Now let's take a look at Final Cut. This is encoding decoding engine and how it is exporting. So H.264, all of these are the top ship. It has two encoder, two decoder engine. On the Max, you're good. On the Ultra, it technically has four, but like I said, it's an unrealized potential at this point in time. So I'll probably have to like do a test with resolve or something like that to really you know max out the m1 max or the m1 ultra rather and see where that takes us but right now h.264 hevc timing is about the same including prores 422 as well so lots of things to really consider there but the timing for the most part it's very similar they're just about the same the m1 max is just a touch slower but we're only talking about seconds so that's not really a big deal all right Analysis. So let's take a look at all this data and really crunch this down. So the main question that you're probably wondering here is, should you upgrade? Personally, I would say that spending the extra $200 to get eight extra GPU core is probably not worth the money. And this includes for majority of photography tasks because the gain we're getting are very small, especially with Lightroom Classic. Now, for instance, if you're running Lightroom, the cloud version, and you can use that 18% gain on export, by all means, this is something that you can, should consider doing. 
But for any other task, even for Capture One, spending this extra $200 doesn't equivocate itself to a better performance overall. And this is something that you've seen in video tests that I've shown you as well. So what are some better ways if you're just you know, have your mindset on upgrading your machine. Well, what I would probably do is add an extra $200. That will bring it up to $400. And then you can consider upgrading to 64 gigabytes of memory, which I think that would probably be the better option for you to go with. Or for instance, when you're configuring these machine, I might actually just spend the extra $400 and upgrade to a two terabyte SSD if you need more storage or just don't upgrade altogether if you're fine with one terabyte and 32 gigabytes of memory. But spending this, you're really not going to get a lot from it. Now, if you configure this, for example, from a mid-tier configuration machine or from the base one, 512 gigabyte SSD, that may be a good idea for you to consider upgrading to a one terabyte. And that may be a path that you might want to choose instead of actually upgrading the ship itself. So those are just some of the things to consider. Now. I have been browsing on Apple refurbished website because I am curious and I found the top M1 Max specs machine with 32 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte SSD selling for $26.89. When it comes to Apple refurbished site, if you find something you like, get it right away because stock fluctuates all the time. But when we compare this to a few of the variations for the M2 Max machine, I mean, here are some of the savings that we can get. So for instance, this is just the base M2 Max. It's not the top one. And with this, we're looking at around $610 variation or around 18% price variation. And you saw that the M1 Max still performs just fine. So if I would consider upgrading my machine or if I'm considering getting a new machine, I might actually look at getting the M1 Max instead because I can get a machine that's equivalent for a much better price, or I can even look for one that has maybe more memory, or for example, a larger SSD that will be cheaper than the M2 Max machine. That's what I would consider because the timing are just so close to each other. So that would be the first thing. Now, if we end up configuring the M2 Max to the top specification, this is the top one with 38 GPU. We're now looking at a price variation or $810 or 23%. Personally, use that money you're saving to buy Apple Care Plus because I mean, these LCD screens, they're new, they're fairly delicate or mini LED rather. And if you drop the machine, you don't want to have a large bill, having Apple Care Plus help on that. Or if something goes wonky with a screen from a manufacturer defect, at least you have that cover for up to like three years. And you can also do that yearly as well. So, so many different things to consider in that regards. But personally, I would use a saving to either find a machine with an upgrade components, again, 64 gigabytes of memory, or for example, a two terabyte or even larger one, if you need that. Because performance, I mean, for the most part, they're fairly close to each other. So those are things I would really think about. So when it comes to really upgrading, should I go in and upgrade? I mean, for me, I didn't do that on my 14 inch MacBook Pro. And based on the result I'm seeing, I probably made the right decision not to do that because there's not that much gain that I could get from it. Now I have created this chart for those of you that are coming from an Intel system. This is going to help you choose the ship. So it goes from good, better, best. So for Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, a good one would be the, the Pro series. The Mac series is definitely gonna be a big jump because you do see some performance improvement there. And if you want the best out of Auto Bunch, I would definitely choose Ultra because that still sits at the very top of the pack. When it comes to Photoshop, I would say that for the most part, Pro is gonna be just fine unless you need access to more memory in a system to which you may have to choose the Mac ship. When it comes to Capture One, I recommend Max because Capture One does utilize GPU fairly heavily, although it doesn't scale well. My recommendation for these Mac ship for Capture One is just to choose the base Mac ship, meaning that don't spend the extra money to upgrade to the top GPU because Capture One can't really go in and utilize that. And if you're doing video, definitely the Max or the Ultra because of the double encoder decoder engine, it's going to cut the time for any transcoding, any exporting that you do in half and personally, that is a worthwhile endeavor. Now, as far as memory in the system goes, if you could run with 16, more power to you. Personally, for pros, I recommend going with at least 32. That's gonna give you more room to run app. And, and if you ever work on a task that requires more memory, it may not be something that you do every day, but that 32 gigabytes is going to give the program the room for it to do more computation much faster on a really fast memory. As far as SSD goes, if you really just want to avoid and sidestep the conversation about SSD speed together, I would go with one terabyte. 
But if 512 is what fits into your workflow, I mean, it's really not a bad option either. If you go with a 512 gigabyte SSD, I can tell you that in only one test on a system with limited amount of memory, that is the 56 gigabyte Photoshop test, that's the only one that's showing a slowdown. But that's also like a really large file that most of us would not even go through. So those are things to consider. Now, if you already own an M series ship, the best thing to do is to probably use this chart. Pick what machine you currently have. Say for instance, if you already have, for instance, an M1 Pro, well, it's not a bad idea for you to sidestep to the M1 Max to get a better performance, or you can, for instance, go to the Ultra and just leapfrog your performance as well. So that would be one way of going about it. Interestingly enough, these two, the M2 Pro, M2 Max just released, so there's really not a lot of scaling, but if you do want to scale, I mean, Pro going to Max, and the Max, amazingly enough, is still going to the M1 Ultra because that still sits at the top of the list. Now, if you currently have an M2 machine and you feel like you want to upgrade, any of the paths, for example, upgrading M2 to the M1 Pro, Max, or Ultra, those are all valid considerations or just doing a linear upgrade. So when you really think about upgrading your machine, you don't necessarily have to jump a generation. You can even go back a generation. And for the most part, the performance are going to be equal, if not faster, but you're going to gain certain aspect of it. For example, going to from the M2 to the M1 Pro or Max, you can link it up to more displays. There are more high efficiency core, high speed cores on the system that you can utilize. There are more GPU. If your task can use GPU, you can really tap into that performance. So there are certain advantages that you can gain from it at a machine that is now at a lower price. So these are things that we have to think about. So based on what you're seeing right now, we have to configure our computer today based on the specific workflow that we're doing. And I have shared with you what type of resources the application is using at various stages of the program. So really think about what you do and configure your computer based on those needs. Anyway, I hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell when you're new and in our retrust. trust.